Hey, hey, hey. What's up, guys? Hey, a uh, couple things today. Really important numbers. Super important numbers for like weeks and weeks and weeks away. Like seven weeks away that I want to show you right now. Don't miss it because you won't ever be able to get it back again. Of course, my lame attempt at being funny. But let's get into it. So a couple things I want to go over today. Number one, I want to give you like the odds sheet for week one. Uh, just to kind of show you the games that are out there, the lines, and a couple of books that I typically use, where their number's at, where the variance is at, and then where my number is at. Um, one thing that I'm going to point out right now is I'm going to go over the first week's games and the odds and things like that. And then secondly, I'm going to point out the value spots or the spots where maybe I think the number is off in one way or the other. That doesn't necessarily mean I am betting just strictly value. And I'm, I'm saying that because I think it's very easy to get caught up in the whole like, hey, this number is way off. We need to bet it just because the number is way off uh, and kind of take a team we don't think we're, is going to win or we don't think has a good matchup because the number says so. Uh, it's not the way I play. You you know, if you want to do that, that's that's perfectly fine. It's just not the way that I usually place bets. Um, on top of that, you're going to see some spots where the value is actually against me and I still just like the play. Maybe it's a lesser play for me when it gets time to actually put the money down. Uh, maybe it's just a lesser play for you, depending on how comfortable you feel with that. Uh, but we'll get there. So let's go ahead and get started. For week one, if you're looking at the screen, uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, you're going to see all the different games for week one. And across the top of the board, you're going to see three, four, five, six, seven different uh, books that you can use to place these wagers. And it's just kind of a quick chart for you to look at. Go down, see who's got numbers. I tried to color code it. Really, the green is uh, the green and red just kind of contrast, like, hey, where are your numbers different? The Bills-Rams game, this actually has pretty much changed across the board. So, uh, full transparency, I got these numbers, I believe, on the 2nd of August. Uh, either the 1st or 2nd of August. But since then, some of these numbers have already changed. And probably the most surprising one to me is that Bills-Rams game, in most books, they have the Rams at 1.5 point dogs now. Uh, so haven't updated that just yet but it's one and a half points for the most part all across uh, now the one thing that is staying consistent consistent is that all of the books are matching each other as soon as the number moves so that Bills Rams game mainly because it's taking so much action obviously it's the first game of the season it's kickoff it's a Thursday night game all eyes are on it the Super Bowl winners from last year are in it a very very hyped team in the bills is involved in it so you're gonna get a lot of cash a lot of plays here uh, we're just public coming in with their money and I gotta tell you I, it's it's money that moves lines so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I know it's all public money that's moving it it could be sharp guys it could be public I'm telling you if you've watched this channel at all you know why I like the Rams. I have money down on the Rams at this point. I'm already a unit in. I probably aren't. I'm not gonna uh, put anything additional on that unless this number creeps up to three, which I really highly doubt because this number started as the Rams as a one point favorite uh, early in the summer. So again, I, I don't think I'm putting anything down on that unless we get to that point, and I don't really see that point coming. Um, my personal number is having that game as a pick'em. So if you can grab the Rams at the one and a half, or if you find another line that you want to tease and get the Rams up to seven and a half, I don't think you need it. But just in case that's the way you want to play it, I think there is some value on the Rams. Um, even just taking the money line, I know a lot of these places, even though they have it as a minus one, they either were not putting out a money line or the money line were this, was the same exact odds as the plus one for the Rams. So... Just take a look at whichever book you're going to use. Uh, next is the Ravens-Jets game. It's pretty much sixes everywhere. Uh, DSI, as you'll notice here, bet DSI that is, has it at a five and a half point game. So if you can, you want to try and grab it at bet DSI and get that extra hook, uh, especially because, again, six is becoming a key number. If it Basically, it already has become a key number. 
Uh, so just if you can grab that five and a half, I would, uh, and I actually have at this point. So that's where I would be looking to go with this one. The Ravens-Jets game is really one of my favorite games for week one, uh, but in a little bit we'll get into why you may want to go the other route with this, especially if you can get some maybe variance in the numbers. Um, Saints-Falcons game, it's between five and five and a half. Not really any key numbers there. Not really a game I want to touch either way. Uh, the Pats Dolphins game. So this is another one and actually I can update this for you right now because it has only changed in one spot and that is in my bookie. Uh, so mybookie.com if you want to get some action down on that game would be the place to go if you are a Patriots backer and I am. So that's another one of my plays for week one is going to be the Patriots plus three. Uh, earlier in the summer we grabbed the Patriots money line and I believe it was plus 130 back then or plus 135 um, that number is essentially still the same some places they have it down to plus 125 but at this point if you can go to my bookie and get the key number of three I would grab the Patriots plus the three points I personally have this game as a one-point game um, and if you look back to last year it actually ended up being a one-point game I believe it was 16 to 17 was the final score I do think it's going to be a pretty close game it is a divisional game uh, I personally think the Patriots are going to win this game mainly because the Dolphins are working with a first-time head coach uh, they have better talent but you're going to have Bill Belichick on your side versus uh, what essentially is a rookie head coach regardless of you know uh, having Tyreek Hill or anybody else for that matter but we'll go into that more in a second uh, Browns Panthers Browns Panthers has a lot of variance in it so some places it is totally off the board and that's understandable especially with the Deshaun Watson stuff still at least somewhat in the air with the appeals and all the other processes uh, the places that do have it on the board some places have it as the uh, Browns minus one other places have it as uh, Panthers minus one so depending on what team you're looking for you may want to jump on that you know just kind of again play that variance especially again if you are looking to play a teaser you could go to one book and get the browns plus seven go to another book get the panthers plus seven obviously you want to put them on opposite ends of a teaser so you would want to you know two different teases or two opposite sides to tease to make that work but you could essentially get both sides and hope to middle because by all accounts this game even with Jacoby Brissett, should be a pretty close game. Uh, my line on that game is at about two and a half, so I'm not really touching that one, but if you can, again, tease it with something, you're going to get some value in there on either side, and you have a great chance to middle or hedge. Uh, next is going to be steelers Bengals, six and a half to six, pretty much all the way around. Not really a game I want to touch. Um... I just there's too many variables all over the place the Bengals yes they should win they're the better team on paper I have it at about a six point game so the line is you know pretty accurate uh, not really a whole lot of value for me in that particular game 49ers Bears is the next one now this is one that the numbers as far as like Madden is concerned um, says should be a pick em. now what they put out is almost a seven point game and six and a half uh, or six depending on what book you're at and some of the places the six is kind of juiced um, and this is of course with the 49ers being the favorite the Bears have that first time head coach in Nathaniel Hackett a very inexperienced quarterback in Justin Fields and you know you guys know you know pretty much the roster there not a whole lot of uh, really talented players whereas the 49ers obviously they have Kyle Shanahan very seasoned experienced coach a lot of you know big name players and star players uh, their biggest question, of course, is Trey Lance and how he's going to come out. I am personally finding myself more and more in favor of Trey Lance. Just the more I get to read about him and learn about him and kind of how that offense is being shaped and molded to him. Uh, so I do believe the 49ers are going to win this game. And this one, again, goes back to just kind of that head coaching statistic that we looked at earlier in the offseason, uh, which was just stating that rookie head coaches are only win 25 percent of the time and that's including when they play against other rookie head coaches um i believe we have it was either seven or eight first time head coaches or, or brand new head coaches to their respective teams this year so you're 
going to kind of want to keep that stat in the back of your mind here just because it's going to come up a couple times. And there's some more statistics pointing to first-time or uh, you know, new head coaches not doing great, just not the first week, but kind of throughout the entire season. And most of these guys are going to average about 17 points a game. Uh, I believe it was Sean McVay is the only one who averaged either 19 or 20 points a game in his first year with the Rams. Uh, but, again, that's we'll get into that more as we get there. Uh, next is the Eagles-Lions. Pretty much everywhere you go, it's either four or four and a half. I actually have it handicapped at about a two-point game. So there's some value there. That's something I necessarily want to touch, but it's there uh, if you want to get involved in that. Colts, Texans, this is one that I really like. I have the number at about what should be three and a half to four. Uh, but everywhere you look, the number is at eight. So you've probably heard me say this before. If you've been watching this channel for a while, the Colts have been notoriously terrible at opening the season. I don't believe Frank Reich has ever won a season opener with the Colts. If he has, it's only one time. Um, and in saying that, he's really played some not so great teams and just has not had a great start i do think and i've given you the reason before so just tune it out if you've heard it if you have not i do believe frank reich is one of these guys who likes to look at statistics he likes to play to the advantages or disadvantages of his uh, opponents and that's all well and great but for the first game of the season there's not really a lot to go on so he's kind of having to coach on the fly and that's not really where you want your coach to be at now obviously as the season gets going and he has more numbers he gets better the whole team gets better uh before this first week i do believe the texans are underrated and you're gonna see that kind of as a trend for these first three weeks the texans as most teams who are you know uh kind of looked down upon usually are they are underrated and undervalued by the books so i've kind of handicapped them at about a four point fa four point uh, advantage in most of weeks if, towards the beginning of the year. So at least weeks through one through three, we're going to see them a lot as having some value. Now it's up to you if you want to actually play them or not. I do believe I'm going to put at least a little something on the Texans. It may even just be like a, a quarter unit and just even split that up to like taking the plus eight and then maybe just putting a couple pennies on the, on the money line because it's a pretty big money line. Uh, it just going off the trends of the Colts not being great, the Texans being undervalued. Uh, the, it's a divisional game, so it's probably going to be a lower scoring game, especially the first time out. And even if the Texans don't win, I don't see this being a huge blowout. It's probably going to be a lower scoring game. Um, and in saying that, I just want to go back up to a previous game, which is the Patriots Dolphins. Same kind of setup. It is a divisional game. These guys have actually played each other to open the season, not just last year, but the year prior to that. And in both of those games, the total st stayed well under 40. The total for this year is at 44 and a half. It is taking place in Miami. So it's going to be pretty hot, pretty muggy, pretty humid. Um, the Patriots may get a little fatigued so that if you don't want to back the Patriots, I get it. I understand why you wouldn't. But if you don't find yourself taking the Patriots in this one, you may want to look to play the under uh, with those fatigue factors coming in. First game of the season, guys are not in you know midseason shape just yet, uh, and it being just very hot or expected to be hot and humid, we could see some of these guys kind of taper off towards the end. And again, for the third straight year, have this being some sort of odd like 11 to 14. 13 to 17 kind of score and staying well under the total so i do like the under in that game uh i have not put anything down on that just yet but as we get closer to the to actual kickoff i may want to put just a couple pennies down on that uh, let's go ahead and move on to the jags and washington three and a half to four points is pretty much what you're going to find on this one all over the place my line is at a two I really don't want to touch this one either. It's just too many questions on both sides of the ball. Uh, Chiefs Cardinals, I have it, the Madden numbers, I should say, have it handicapped at about a one and a half point game. The Chiefs being the three point favorites, I think is understandable. I personally think the Chiefs are going to uh, either win this game in a blowout fashion or the Cardinals pull out an upset. It's one or the other. I don't see this game as being a three 
point difference uh, in any any way. Even if the Cardinals win, I don't think it's going to be a three point game. So I wouldn't even mess around with, uh, with the spread on this one. If you like the Cardinals, you might as well just play the straight money line. If you like the Chiefs, I guess lay the three or maybe look for an alternate total to maybe get a better payout on that. Uh, Raiders Chargers minus three and a half is the current line pretty much everywhere. I also have it at a three and a half point uh, spread as far as like my handicapping. In saying that though, I would actually, and I am actually leaning the Chargers in this game. I might try to buy it down just to the three if I do decide to actually pull the trigger on that. I just think while the ratings and the players and things like that may be uh, similar, at least on paper, I think the Chargers have the better coach. The Raiders do have uh, a new head coach this year in McDaniel. Uh, he has coached before, but really has not had a lot of success. I think he, the best season he's had is like 4-12 and 12 or something along those lines, uh, whereas the Chargers, obviously, we know what they are. The Chargers should have revenge on their mind after they got uh, kind of booted from the playoffs or didn't even make the playoffs because the Raiders won in that last game, and the Raiders actually did sweep them last year. Raiders have had a lot of changes. They've lost a lot of linemen, uh, new coaches. They got a, they got obviously Devontae Adams, and I think that that's gonna kind of buoy us here in the public putting some money down on the Raiders team for that week one. Whereas I think the Chargers are gonna come in and they should be able to just straight dominate the Raiders. Um, in my mind and in this just statistical background for both of these teams and coming into the season, the Chargers have plenty of advantages. Um, the only reason that, that this is handicapped here is because the personnel, again, on paper, looks really similar. Uh, let's go on and move to the Packers-Vikings. This is another one that has some variance because it's anywhere from 1.5 points to 2.5 points. I personally have it as about a 3-point, uh, the Packers being 3-point favorites in this one. I'm not touching it, though. Again, same thing. Vikings have another new head coach we're talking about here in Kevin O'Connell. I actually really like Kevin O'Connell, and I think he could pull off the upset here, especially because we don't know what the Packers are going to look like with the new receiving core that they have. I'm not putting any money on this one, only, again, because there's just too many variables, too many other games I feel good about to try to put anything down on this one. The Giants-Titans is a game that I am putting money on, and this is a value spot. So I have it handicapped as the as a five-point game, meaning that the Titans should be about five-point favorites in this game. Uh, most places you find it at right now, the Giants are actually six-and-a-half-point dogs. I personally took this one, uh, and I actually bought it up to the seven. Now, just kind of a uh, heads up on that, if you go to either every game sportsbook uh, or to GT bets, you're gonna find that at just a little bit of a discounted rate. So it's minus 109 instead of the minus 110. And if you do buy it to the seven, it's gonna be minus 118 instead of minus 120. So save yourself a few pennies, check out maybe GT bets or every game sportsbook, uh, get that seven. Again, I don't think this is gonna be uh, a blowout one way or the other. And I was looking back at some just statistics that I've been kind of keeping track of and was reading about with the Titans. And roughly about 50% of their games in the last two seasons have been one score games or decided by one score. And that's going back to when they had AJ Brown, when they had a healthy Derrick Henry, when they had Julio Jones, when they have just, you know, a much better team altogether. Yes, Derrick Henry's back. Yes, he's healthy. Are they going to maybe change how they play to try to keep him fresh? Who knows? But the point of this is to say that they you're definitely getting some value because not only are you getting a point and a half, you're getting the key number of six. And if you buy it to the seven, you're having to pay just a few extra pennies to get that second key number. And even if the Giants lose, the odds of the Titans really just blowing them out of the water with reduced personnel uh, and the Giants having better coaching staff and one of the best pieces of the Giants. I know I've already talked about Brian Dayball a million times, so you know that I'm going to say that, but Brian Dayball has just is going to turn this team around. At least he should be able to. Now, whether he does in his first game or not is a little harder to say, but he does have an amazing defensive coordinator.
in Wink Martindale. Uh, Wink Martindale was actually the defensive coordinator for the Ravens. Now, last year, the Ravens did not look that great on defense. That is mainly because their entire secondary was injured, and they were battling injuries almost the entire season, if not the entire season. Uh, they were battling both on offense and defense, but the defense really did not look good. Prior to that, though, I believe the lowest finish that Wing Martindale had had with the Ravens was like the 14th rated defense per DVOA, um, and that was obviously they always had some talented players. But he has just he's worked wonders pretty much everywhere he's been. I think it's going to be the same with the Giants. So even if we don't see that offense and that Brian Dayball, um, you know, philosophy come through in the first game, I think the defense is going to do enough, and Wink Martindale is going to have these guys ready to play and ready to shut down this run everybody's fresh and that is the best time to get at somebody like a derrick henry a guy that relies on kind of tiring out that defense so that he can bust the long runs in the fourth quarter it is much harder to do that early in the season and that's kind of evidenced by looking at derrick henry's prior years if you go back not only does he do better in you know the fourth quarter typically but he does better towards the middle and end of the season when he's playing guys who are either hurt, you know, he's not playing the starters for the defense, or he's playing teams that have been fatigued, that haven't had a bye week yet. They 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 have a, a rest disadvantage, and he's being able to take advantage of that. That's not going to be the case week one. I think that there's a lot of different factors here pointing at the Giants, even being able to pull off the upset against the Titans here, where the Titans don't really have – a great plan of attack for the Giants because there's not a lot to go off of yet other than whatever you've seen on tape from Brian Dayball with an entirely different team and entirely different personnel. So enough of that one. That was going to be probably one of my favorite picks um, besides the Rams for week one. Uh, the Bucks Cowboys, this one has moved to about two and a half pretty much all across the board. Um, and that is really because of some injuries and things like that and some, some maybe optimism about Chris Godwin. I don't think he's going to be there, but I also had the line at 2.5, so I don't see any value left in that. The Broncos-Seahawks game is really 4.5, 4, 5. Uh, just two days ago, it was pretty much 5s all across, and bet DSI was the only one at 4.5 or 4.5. Uh, a lot of these lines have moved down, and they've gone. Some of them have even gone down to four, uh, and I'm assuming that's because of the Tim Patrick news. Now, Tim Patrick is not moving my line a point or even a half a point, uh, so I had it at three and a half. My line's going to stay at three and a half. I do believe the Broncos pull this one out only because I don't think Russell Wilson's going to lose to Seattle. Now, Seattle, before you go out and bet on the Broncos. Uh, and before you go out and put all this money down on the money line thinking like, oh, yeah, Russell's going to just smoke these guys. He knows what they're doing. Keep in mind, and I don't think enough people talk about this, Seattle knows the tendencies of, of Russell Wilson. They have watched this guy. They've been in practice with this guy. They've worked with him for however many years he's been in the league. They know his tendencies. So while they may not know the playbook for the Broncos, they're going to know certain little nuance and intricacies on how to attack Russell Wilson and how to play him that most other teams do not. And I think that uh, that entire Seattle team is going to try to be a very defensive-focused team this year, and it's just unfortunately the way that it's going to be. If you're a Seattle fan, I don't think it's going to be a great year, but I do think this first game is going to be a lot closer than most people are thinking. I think most people are expecting Russell to go in there and just light him up, and that's probably not going to be the way it works out, at least not week one. Uh, so that's week one of not only looking at the lines, but giving you my numbers, my value plays, things like that. So if you want to get a quick snapshot of that, I'm going to show you the shorter list here. Uh, this, these are all of the games that actually have value. And the four teams that I am looking at. So my two favorite plays for week one, again, are the Giants Titans. And I'm getting the Giants and I just bought it up to the seven. So it's Giants plus seven. Uh, so for me, it's going to be two points worth of value. If you want to just take the six and a half, I don't blame you. And you're still going to get a point and a half value plus the key number at six. Uh, the Rams Bills, again, I'm taking that. I I struggle to see the advantages the Bills have with the Rams. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's definitely ways they can win. 
and you have to kind of think about it from both sides. So the Bills, you know, they could use Stephon Diggs and try and uh, maybe get some shorter routes and try to maybe get some pre pre snap motion to get Jalen Ramsey off him. There's all sorts of things that they could do. So I'm not saying this is a lock by any means, just like I never do, but. I am saying on paper, statistically, and even when you try to kind of work it out in your head, I don't see an easy path to victory for the Bills where I see several different outlets for the Rams and I see several different advantages on the Rams side of the ball. So those are my two favorite plays. The other two are the Patriots Dolphin or the Patriots over the Dolphins. Uh, again, two points of value to take the Patriots plus three. And you have Bill Belichick going up against a first-time head coach, uh, or a new head coach, I, I should say, with the Dolphins. Then uh, the Jets, Ravens. So this is the one that I'm going against the value here. So the value is actually with the Jets. Three and a half points of value with the Jets. I'm still taking the Ravens in this one. Um, the biggest question mark here with the Ravens is going to be health. We're hearing that J.K. Dobbins should be ready for week one. Even if he's not, I still like the Ravens to be able to beat the Jets. The Jets just don't really have uh, enough to keep up with this Ravens team if they are playing up to par. Uh, and even, again, without their starting running back or running backs, if uh, Gus Edwards is also not able to go, I think Lamar is going to do more than enough to be able to get his team the victory. The question comes in with the line. Usually in the past, we've seen the Ravens come out and just smash teams that first week of the season. This week, maybe, or this year, I should say, maybe a little bit different because it does sound like the Ravens are going to take it a little bit slower. They're not going to be going into preseason thinking that they need to go 3-0. and uh, And again, that's just because of the injuries that happened last year and maybe changing the mindset of Harbaugh. Either way, I think that first week of the season... He's going to have them ready to go. He had all offseason to game plan against Zach Wilson, who maybe he takes a big jump. I'm not really holding my breath on it, uh, but I do think the Ravens come out, get the victory, and probably do it pretty handily. So either way, I like the Ravens minus the six points for that week one matchup. Now let's go on to week two. And so at the bottom here is just a list of different uh algorithms and rankings and things like that and it's again mainly the Madden algorithm for these first couple weeks so I've done it for the first three weeks I was going to go out to the first four weeks however most books only have the first two weeks worth of, of uh, spreads up I do have uh, the book showing the spreads for every single game throughout the season however because they are no longer available in most places I really didn't want to go beyond week three because between now and then, things are going to change, injuries are going to happen, reevaluations are going to occur, some teams are going to look better than we thought, other teams are going to look worse. And so there's really not a whole lot of point in me doing a week four, week five, week six um, breakdown when whatever spread we put out there is probably going to be very different by the time they actually put the numbers back up. So I only did the first three weeks. In week two, the games that have value here, Seahawks 49ers, the Seahawks being eight and a half point uh, dogs. My line is at about four and a half. Uh, Titans Bills. So the Titans are five and a half point dogs, and my line has them at seven and a half. Uh, sorry, that is the other way around. It's the Bills at a seven and a half point favorite, whereas the handicap in here shows they should only be about a five and a half point favorite. So you're getting two points of value with the Titans in this particular matchup. Again, not really one I'm looking to touch just because of the questions we already talked about with the Titans, but there is value there. The Texans Broncos are the next one here. Now, this is, again, like I said, the Texans being undervalued again. Uh, the line is currently Texans plus 10.5, and, and this one is still up most places because it's only a week two game. Uh, my line has it at about a seven point difference. So if you want to jump on the Texans at the 10.5, I definitely would. Um, I'm looking to do that just as we get a little bit further into preseason here. Really, I just want to make sure that nothing happens to, like, a Dave, you know, Mills, uh, or if something does happen to a Russell Wilson, you know, where where is the line going to go? So hopefully neither of those things happen, but before we put any money down on it, I would like to get a couple of snaps in just to make sure they're going to be all right. Um, that all being said, though, my favorite play in this game is actually Texans Broncos under 42 and a half for week two. 
a lot of different reasons for that one. They are playing in Denver. So again, we get back to another fatigue factor. It's high altitude, very early in the season. Uh, these guys, just the NFL players in general, are not at 100% peak performance until we get into about midseason. Uh, secondly, though, the Broncos have not allowed of more than a 40 point game for their their season home opener and i believe it's been like four or five years uh yes players change out coaches are different so that doesn't mean a whole lot but it does go at least to speak somewhat to that fatigue factor just showing that a lot of players are gonna get kind of tired and even if we have a higher score in the first half the second half may be a little bit slower um secondly though the texans in general are just a slower paced team uh, in the second half, in the first half last year, statistically, they were uh, faster, they played quicker, they had a more up-tempo, and they actually did more scoring in their first half last year than they did compared to their second half. Now, that may change because they have Lovey Smith this year, who also likes to play slow, he likes to play conservative. The Broncos may come out, they may get a huge lead on the Texans to open the game up um, if it if they do that's actually quite all right because I don't see them continuing to keep their foot on the gas if they don't need to so early in the season against a team that they are double-digit favorites against. Um, another thing that's kind of speaking to that Texans plus 10.5 point line, if this is correct and the algorithm and everything is correct in saying that this is going to be a lower-scoring game, I believe we had it capped uh, at like a 20 to 14 kind of game, then the 10 and a half points is huge. Because if the total score only ends up being like 30, even to 35 points, you're getting about a third of the points in that spread with a 10 and a half point spread. So that's just, that's gigantic for a game where we don't expect a whole lot of points. The points to come at a premium. So getting 10 of them is going to be huge. So, again, I like the 10.5 for the Texans. I also really like the under as my favorite play for Week 2. Uh, Jaguars-Colts is the next one. Again, this one is uh, has the Colts as a favorite, 4.5-point favorites. I only have them handicapped at about a 1-point favorite, so the, the value is on the Jaguars. I'm not putting any money on this just yet. I want to at least see Week 1 first, kind of see how the Jaguars team is gelling with their new coach, with their new, you know, kind of healthy players I should say and new receiving core and all that kind of stuff my other favorite play or my second play for week two is going to be the Bengals at the Cowboys so as of right now the Cowboys are actually two and a half point favorites over the Bengals that's right as crazy as that sounds the Cowboys who could not win a damn playoff game to save their lives are two and a half point favorites over the Bengals who just made the Super Bowl last year now Obviously, again, this goes back to just, you know, players and personnel on paper and kind of having a, a generic power ranking, and that's mainly how Vegas does it, at least to open the season up. So, again, going back to a couple of videos ago now, this is the best time to make your money in the NFL, you know, betting landscape in the first, like, four to six weeks of the season. But enough on that. The Bengals, if you can even buy the hook and get the Bengals plus three against the Cowboys, I don't care that the Cowboys are at home. Uh, I really don't even care who the Cowboys have healthy at that time. If they have 100% healthy players and Michael Gallup is there and everybody's running out there, I do not believe they're going to be able to hang up with the Bengals receiving core. The Cowboys had like the number one pass defense last year. Uh, not to say that it was luck, but a lot of that is very hard to repeat. It's almost unrepeatable. The amount of interceptions they had, the amount of just takeaways they had in general, I don't see that happening again, and especially when you are putting guys like Trayvon Diggs to have to match up with a Jamar Chase and a T. Higgins. and just it, They have mismatches all across the field. I am struggling to believe that they have this line out there. So I would just buy it to the three just to get the key number essentially of that three the cowboys do at least have a, a somewhat decent home record but it's against very weak competition um and usually when they play these good teams even if they win it ends up being a very close game so the Bengals plus the three is either my favorite or second favorite play for that week two game and you are getting a point and a half of value even if you just take it at the two and a half 
Uh, next is the Vikings Eagles. Vikings Eagles, I have it handicapped at about a two. Uh, I'm sorry, at about a, a half a point separating the two teams. And the current line is two and a half points with the Eagles being the favorites. Uh, I do like the Vikings in that game. And if I had to pick one, I would probably play the Vikings. But I do not find myself really interested in, in getting involved in that game. Next one is the Falcons Rams. Another one I'm not really going to get involved in. There is a lot of value in the Falcons. I believe it's all three weeks. The first three weeks, the Falcons have value just like the Texans because they are another team that's not really expected to put out a whole lot of wins. Um, the reason I'm not going to get involved in this one is the Rams are the team, sort of like the Chiefs. If they're going to beat you, they're going to beat you, and it's not necessarily going to be close. Um, you know, the Rams and the Chiefs are two teams you don't really want to tease against. Uh, like in this case, if you were to tease the Falcons and tease them up to 19 points, I still really wouldn't feel safe because I don't give them a shot to win this game at all um, unless, like, the Rams bus gets in an accident or something and they have to start, like, all third stringers. It's just not going to happen. And so whether you give me 13 points or 20 points or whatever, I just don't feel safe with it. The Rams could blow these guys out, like, 40 to 0, and I w would not be surprised at all. Um, so that's just the way that goes. So that's it for week two. Lastly, is going to be week three, and then we'll wrap it up. I'm sorry, I know it's coming in kind of a longer video. Uh, but the reason I'm going over all three weeks right now, guys, is because these lines are going to start popping up. And week two, like I said, is out already in most places. And you would do better to get these lines right now before everything starts changing. As we get closer to the season, you're going to see more and more money entering the arena. You're going to see more and more money moving lines, making things sharper, usually. Sometimes you'll have lines go the other way, and it maybe even present some more value for you, like the Rams-Bills game that we have for week one. But typically, the line does get sharper, and the value is just gone. Uh, one of the plays that I have been touting all offseason was the Hall of Fame game under 33.5 points. Laugh at me if you want, because it's a preseason game doesn't matter the money's going to be the same shade of green and if you didn't grab the under 33 and a half earlier in the offseason it has officially moved down to 30 and a half um, and that was hours and hours ago so it could be even lower than that by the time we actually get to kick off because that under has just gotten pounded so if you were listening earlier in the offseason congratulations if you actually listened and got that play even if it was for like a half unit even if we lose that bet, you should feel really happy with the fact that you, you got three points of value in your favor. So you got three points of closing line value, which is hard, if not almost impossible to do. So hopefully you guys grab that one out there. But just goes to speak to grab these numbers now. Know what numbers you're looking for. That's probably the hardest part of betting the NFL is knowing what numbers to look for. It's really easy to sit there and say like, oh, yeah, this team is better than that team great but quantify it how much better at what point would you take team a instead of team b um, there's there is a line for everyone and i'm giving you those lines right now now if you don't agree with the handicapping and you think maybe it's a point off or a half point off or whatever that's fine you can change it you can do your own algorithms i have a free book that shows you how to create the algorithms you can just take a snapshot of what i'm showing you here i am here to give you free information not trying to sell you anything I'm not trying to, to you know, reinvent the wheel or anything. I'm giving you what I know, what I have. You want to tweak it, make it your own, do so. I'll help you do it. Reach out to me. Let me know. I'll give you my information. If any of you guys are listening that have received my spreadsheets and stuff, I'm not stingy with it. I will give you all the information you need to know. And if anything, I may ask for you to pitch in or help me with making better lines and getting your feedback. So, anyways, with all that being said, that's why I'm giving you these first three weeks. That's why this video is a little bit longer, because I want you to know what to look for and be able to jump on these lines as soon as they come out, get the best value, not wait until the very last minute, and in, end up just in a coin toss, because essentially that's what it is. By the time you get to kickoff, the money has moved the line, the sharp guys have come in, the public has come in, it's gone back and forth so much, the line is as sharp as it's going to be right before kickoff and if you're putting bets in right before you're just flipping a coin and thinking you're hopefully you'll be on the right side of it so 
last last week we're going to go over here again week three there are only four games that i have found that have value now these may change as when the numbers come back on uh online that is they're probably going to be different from what they were in the off season and the books that i have so jaguars chargers uh again jaguars another undervalued team the current line is 10 points i have it as only a five and a half point difference now again that's just personnel rankings right so the chargers yeah if you ask me i do think the chargers are 10 points better than the jaguars but personnel wise it doesn't really say so i'm probably not playing that game just because it, both sides don't match up for me my handicapping says one thing just on a statistical standpoint whereas my eyeballs tell me something else i'm not touching that one the colts chiefs that is a two and a half point line, or it was a two and a half point line before they got taken down. And uh, my line has it was only about a half point separating these these teams. Now, I personally will probably buy the hook and get the Colts up to the three. And I know we were just talking about not doing that with the Chiefs, right? Not trying to get like the three points or you know something small like that. The reason I would do that with this Colts team is strictly because the Colts match up really well against the Chiefs. So even if the Chiefs win, the Colts are one of those rare teams I think can keep it close with them because they can run the ball, because the Chiefs will allow teams to run the ball. They would rather kind of funnel you into the run instead of letting you pass on them, especially because their secondary has not been great as of late. They will allow those runs. And when you're going to let Jonathan Taylor run free, it's not going to be a quick day. He's going to keep running and keep running and keep running. And Frank Reich is going to keep taking what you give him. And they're probably going to keep moving the chains. And it's going to be long, slow drives. And the Colts most likely will end up in touchdowns. Uh, and even if you get them into a situation where it's like a third and five, third and six, third and eight even, the Chiefs don't necessarily have the personnel to stop somebody like a Michael Pittman consistently. So I do see him picking up some first downs. I just see a lot of personnel uh, advantages for the Colts here, as well as style of play. I think, again, if you go back and read the book, style of play does mean a lot for us here as far as handicapping is concerned. And I think the Colts just have a perfect matchup for slowing the game down and being able to keep the Chiefs in check, as well as having a, a decent defense that can actually kind of put some pressure on the Chiefs without having to send additional rushers and kind of keeping guys back in coverage so they're not giving up these huge plays uh and that's again assuming that's what the chiefs want to do uh which probably is going to be whenever they can although the way teams are playing them they're also kind of using juju smith schuster which i assume is going to be more for like the shorter routes and things like that either way getting the three points getting the key number with the colts I think either the Colts outright win this game or they are able to keep it close just because of the way that they play, especially against the Chiefs, because I think the Chiefs are going to play right into their hands unless Andy Reid sees a big deficit coming into like the third or fourth quarter. Uh, next is the Falcons Seahawks. Falcons Seahawks, this is a, a different one because I don't really like either of these teams individually, but my line does have it as a three and a half point game. I'm sorry, I meant as a one and a half point game, but the current line is three and a half. So I think these teams are rather evenly matched and should only be about a point to a point and a half diff uh, different from each other. But right now, the Falcons are actually catching three and a half points. So you're going to get two points of value plus the key number of three. Um, and in a game where I don't really see either of these teams being super high scoring, and like we said earlier, the Seahawks most likely entering the season. Uh, with the foresight of being a very defensive team, a very run-heavy team. Uh, you know, Pete Carroll, that's kind of his M.O., and I don't see him changing that this year, especially without Russell Wilson. This is either going to be a really close game or a really lopsided game, but either way, it's going to probably be a low-scoring game. So getting the 3.5 points should be to our advantage here, and it is, again, another value spot. So this is one week I would actually look to take the Falcons in week three, especially if we see the Seahawks get off to a good start. Uh, even if they don't win that first week against the Broncos, they just kind of keep it close and they get like a good showing. I could really see this line going up and you may even be able to get the Falcons at like a plus six 
depending on how good the Seahawks have looked and how bad the Falcons have looked those first two weeks. So keep that in mind because I think that Falcons play is a pretty good one. Uh, last is the Packers-Buccaneers game for week three. Uh, this one, we have really the Packers handicapped at about a two-point dog, but right now they are getting three and a half points against the Buccaneers. Didn't make this a favorite play just yet for that week three game, mainly because, again, I have not seen the way that this Packers team is going to work. They may be god-awful without Devontae Adams, um, but they may find a way to make it work. Aaron Jones may carry this team on his back, for all I know, um, You know, with a bunch of little dump-offs and getting all the additional fantasy stats that we're kind of thinking he's going to get, right? But either way, I haven't made it a, a play just yet, but it does look like that's going to be a value spot for the Packers in Week 3. And that's it. Those are all the value spots for the first three weeks. Hopefully you saw something you like. Hopefully you saw something you want to get involved in. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put my plays in the description below as far as the Week 1 plays, and then we'll keep updating them as we get through the weeks here. Uh, next thing that's going to be on the list, guys, and something I'm going to be making is the schedule advantages uh, so the next time I come on here with the video, it's going to be over the scheduled advantages for certain teams, rest advantages, all that kind of stuff. And it'll be towards the second half of the season because that's usually when we see it matter more. Uh, like I was saying, first half of the season, teams are pretty well rested. Guys are typically, you know, relatively healthy entering the season. Uh, and then we start getting into bye weeks and things like that at about week six. And by, I would say, about week eight, week nine is when you start to see these best advantages really kind of rear their heads uh, with some teams having already, you know, taken their bye, they're rested, other teams not having it, other teams having really late um, bye weeks, and some teams having to play like three road games in a row, like the Packers are a perfect example, they're going to have to do that this year. Um, so being able to find those spots that you really want to take advantage of. So we'll talk about that next time. We'll go over all the spots that I was able to find, um, as well as maybe some others that you were able to find. If you want to comment on that, if you know of like a, a bad spot for a certain team that you already know off the top of your head, put it in the comments below. But thanks again, guys. Have a great night or have a great day, wherever you're watching this video. And speak to you soon.